What is up, YouTube family? Another quick Nephilim video. This one's going to be awesome. So there are people who believe in a second incursion of the Nephilim. Well, you know, God destroyed the world with a flood to kill off the Nephilim. How'd they end up back here again? And a more specific, very common question is the post-flood Nephilim. Where did they come from? So Noah had three sons, right? And they were pure, like red heifers. Not as in, you did what I said. Good for you. I'm going to reward you by putting you on the ark. The same word that's used for red heifer is used to describe the perfection of Noah and his sons. They were genetically perfect. So... What do we learn about the fall, right? We're told that all flesh had corrupted itself on the earth. Well, all is everyone. Who else is on the ark? The wives of the sons of Noah. Now, they're not even full Nephilim. They're just a portion Nephilim. So at this point, genetics come into play, right? So they have children with Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And now it becomes uh, statistics and variables that determine who will have Nephilim genes and who won't. And the Bible specifies this in the genealogies and lineages. The gospel is just as much there as it is anywhere. So check it out. Shem's first, right? There are no Nephilim, according to Scripture, in Shem's line. I'm going to do a wholly separate video on Shem where I trace Shem's lineage from, uh, you know, uh, Genesis 3.15 all the way down to Jesus. And it's fascinating what we see. But what about uh, Japheth? Japheth, we know... Gog and Magog. And we know from extra biblical sources that they're referred to as giants. And with it, Og, Og, I wonder if there's not a connection to, to Og of Bashan, a giant that is in the Bible. Um, we also have uh, Ham's line. Ham's line has tons of Nephilim in it, right? So uh, the curse, Noah curses Ham's grandson, Canaan. And um, so Canaan is the father of the Amorites. They're mentioned 80 times in the Bible, and we know that they're Nephilim. Uh, Mizraim, his son Kaftor, his son Kaftor was a Nephilim. Um, Kaftor uh, was the father of the Philistines. Uh, we know that there were definitely Philistine giants like Goliath, right? But Kaftor also settled the island of Crete. Think about that. Greek mythology, most of the characters originate in Crete. Hmm, interesting. There's a lot of titans there, right? Now, we see one of Ham's descendants put... And the Bible doesn't indicate that there's any Nephilim in his line, and that's interesting. And we also um, have Cush. Well, Nimrod was a descendant of Cush. So there you go. The Bible gives you all the answers. I do use extra-biblical sources in the subject of the Nephilim. Um, and when I say extra-biblical sources, I define them as books that are mentioned by Scripture, like the Book of Jubilees, Jasher, Enoch, and they certainly add and enhance the narrative. I will definitely say that. I have a theory now that I want to posit to you. David and Goliath is like a huge story for us in Western Christianity. It's almost treated like, oh, the story is unique and special because here's this giant, Goliath, as if no other giants exist. But in every single book of the Bible, going back to Genesis, some Israelites are fighting Nephilim, fighting giants. So what is special about this fight with Goliath? You know, if you go to that area of the world today, there is a mound. Goliath has a burial mound with a memorial. I believe what was unique about David slaying Goliath is that Goliath was the remnant of the Nephilim. He was the last. This is just speculation, but think about it. There's videos floating around online where Graham Hancock explores the burial mound, and why would they want to memorialize this random giant, right? And look what happens after. David becomes king. Israel becomes unified in the land that God promised them. David's son Solomon builds the temple. Now the only thing holding back the Israelites from fully participating in the plan of God is their own actions. Interesting, huh? Anyway, there you go. Talk to you guys next time. Bye.